Ladies and gentlemen, you have tuned in for a phenomenal show today. We are just one week away from the upcoming election. On today's Unscripted Faith, we're going to be joined by a man who was given a vision, a warning that every American needs to hear. Yeah. Plus, we'll be joined by an Emmy Award winning anchor who was confronted with a fatal diagnosis for her unborn baby girl. This heartbreak has brought her from ashes to unshakable faith. You don't want to miss her inspiring story. That's what's coming up right now on Unscripted Faith. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited because this show is going to be outstanding. We got the election. We've yes. got a person that went through all sorts of trauma and carrying a child and giving birth to it. It's yes. going to be great. It really is. We know with the election comes trouble and in our own personal lives. So I think both these guests are going to help to arm us for the season. And be able to navigate <laughs> the turbulence. You got it. Well, listen, God spoke to our next guest in a vision and gave him a warning that we all need to hear before it's too late. My buddy, Bishop Mark Filkey, all the way from Sacramento area. Good to have you, man of God. Good morning, Jay Angela, from the left coast. I'm here on the west coast. Great to see you guys. Looking good. Oh, we're trying. Well, listen, Bishop, we're about a week away from the election. Right now, everything is going to shift a week from today. Tell us about what the Holy Spirit gave to you. I know you to be a strong prophetic voice. I know you to be accurate in all that you do. Please let us know what God has said to you. Yes, sir. Well, the short version is, is I was on a 14-day consecration in uh, the month of uh, July. And on the morning of the 7th, the Holy Spirit woke me up, told me to turn around, grab a tablet, wake up and write. When I grabbed, reached for the tablet, uh, as I was turning back over, the Holy Spirit took me into a vision. And in the vision, now this is on the 9th, the 9th of, of, of July. Um, in the vision, I saw in high speed the President of the United States drop into the ground with the security. And the only way I could explain it was it was in high speed. It went into black and white. It went into slow motion and then black and white again as he was ducking down for cover. And I remember in the vision seeing and realizing he was um, not fully covered. And as you can imagine, it was very disturbing to me. I asked the Lord what this meant, and he basically paused and said, hold on, there's more I want to show you. And then I saw it again in high speed, uh, the attempted assassination plot against the president. Against the, again, that was on the 9th of July. Remember, remember the president was almost killed the, on the 13th. So uh, in that vision... Uh, I tr kind of tried to come out of it, but the Holy Spirit took me back in. He said, Mark, I want you to look. He took me into close view, and as I was looking, all of a sudden I saw what appeared to be, Jay, Angela, as a contract. It had all the legalese that was in it, and uh, I was trying to figure out what I was looking at, and then the Holy Spirit pulled me back and said, look again. And when he pulled me back, I realized I was looking at the 2024 election ballot. And as I begin to, to see this, uh, I begin to question the Lord on what it was about. And he wouldn't allow me to ask questions. He just continued to show me what he was showing me. Then all of a sudden in the vision, it sort of glitched or morphed. And all of a sudden I realized I was looking at electronic ballots. People are walking into voting booths uh, of er every ethnicity, every culture. We're walking into voting booths to vote. And then it glitched again. And when I went in close time, uh, close this time, I realized that what I was looking at was people filling out ballots. And on the ballot, some of the boxes were for, uh, on, on, on the side, on one side, it was for immorality, abortion, all of the issues right now that we know uh, that we are up against. And again, I said, Lord, what is this? And then he said, I want you to look again. And when I looked again, when people were filling out the boxes, you know, the little circles or the squares that is on the paper ballots, the moment they put their pin to that square, Jay, blood began to flow out of those squares. 
as you can imagine, it was very graphic, uh, very shocking. And I sort of asked the Lord, Lord, can I come out of the vision? I, I need to know what I'm looking at. And he said, no, I want you to look again. He pulled me back and brought me in again. And then I saw people everywhere where people were filling out the ballot for righteousness, the protection of unborn lives, um, the protection of the sanctity of marriage, um, of life, uh, our right to protect ourselves. As they were filling that out for all the things that we as believers stand for, as they went down to sign their signature, their signature was signed in blood. And then it glitched again. And again, I was telling the Holy Spirit, I want to come out of the vision. I, I want to ask you about what I'm seeing. He wouldn't allow me to come out of the vision. He took me up closer again. And where people were voting for unrighteousness, everything that is ungodly, uh, when they went to write their signature, uh, I looked, and all of a sudden, when they were writing, it glitched, and I saw two upside-down, what looked like two upside-down telephone poles. I don't know if you guys have those there, but, you know, here in California, we have those telephone poles, and they have, like, a cross and a yeah. bottom piece of wood that goes below that that carries the wires it was upside down on both sides and then as i looked again then i saw uh what i know now know was the baphomet which was half man half woman half ram a half human being and he was there in the middle where people were signing their signatures and it was going in and out as i came out of that vision uh, I began to weep. I said, God, what in the what is going on? And the Holy Spirit said, you must warn my people. This election is not a normal election. There is a shift, a yeah. paradigm shift that's going on in the spiritual dimension that is going to usher the body of Christ into what I believe was the end time outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But as you know, we're living in a time where the Bible said that men would call good evil and evil good. And so God warned me. And so I called Jensen Franklin, my friend Jensen Franklin, who's very close to the president on the 10th, and said, Jensen, you need to warn the president of the United States, not knowing, not realizing that this was going to happen three days later, as you can imagine. Uh, I said, you need to warn the president. And he was on vacation, so he didn't get the text until like the 11th or the 12th and did his best to warn the president. But by the time that he got the message to the president, as you know, it all unfolded uh, on the 13th. So my message, you know, and you can go see the entire vision on YouTube. I, I have it here. You can, you can see what it looks like. Just go to Mark Filkey uh, at YouTube and the entire vision is there. Uh, my son, who's an LA film school graduate, helped me produce it to the very best and the closest to what I actually saw in the vision. But here's what I believe God is saying. I believe that we are in a moment right now. This is not just another election. There's, there's something that's happening right now that is a literal fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And we have to understand that when people go into that voting booth this year, they're not voting politics. They're not even voting their party. They're either voting for the things that matter to America in terms of one nation under God, or they are signing their name to everything that, that the spirit of the Antichrist represents as we move into 25. Bishop. And so I've just warned people, listen, we sent this to everyone you can imagine. I won't name drop, but just imagine everyone who is ahead of a major network. And I want to applaud you all for having the courage to help me today because, we, listen, we sent this. Listen, this is in the hands of Eric Trump, Don Jr., uh, their team, and I'm told that they're thinking about releasing it uh, like the day before the election. Uh, we've sent it to the highest networks, even Christian networks, and we could get very few people that had the courage uh, to show a prophetic warning like this because it's so shocking, and it's just a blatant warning to the body of Christ that you cannot go in this year and believe that your voting is normal. This is about God, His people, His kingdom, or the spirit of the Antichrist. Bishop, Amen. i got to ask a question. 
I got to ask a question here because you mentioned in the vision in the dream that you saw people signing and it was like a contract. What's going to happen to people that choose to vote righteousness versus the people that aren't going to vote righteously? What has God, has God shown you anything about that? Well, th this is the scary thing, okay? So I, I left this part out, so let me re regress. When I saw that contract on the top of it, it, it glitched, and it went from voting ballot to covenant, commitment, and agreement. So when people are voting this year, they are making a covenant. They wow. are either standing wow. behind wow. the sacrificial uh, the sacri sacrificial offering of little babies on the altar of abortion. I don't know if you saw it, but on uh, at, at many of these political rallies, they, there are uh, abortion, mobile abortion units that are surrounding their conventions. The Democratic National Convention Not to had it. All the things that they stand for. So to answer your question, I mean, think about it. In, in many ways, your question is rhetorical because the answer is people are going to be held accountable. And maybe for the first time in history, they're going to be held accountable for what they sign their name to in this year's election. This is not a normal voting ballot. You're voting for good or for evil. It's not even about the personality of Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. It's what they stand for. Now, I don't understand why God chose to use Donald Trump, but let's be honest. You can see there's a movement and a wave that has swept across America. In fact, Jay, do you know that I had an interview with uh, one of the largest um, news agencies in Europe a couple of three weeks ago, and you cannot believe how, how on board they are because even the world is alerted that as America goes, uh, so goes the world. Wow, well, Bishop, you know what? I totally believe that. I don't know how a believer can look at this ballot and not have something move them morally about these biblical values. We thank you so much for your willingness to share this all the way at the East Coast. Uh, thank you so much for bringing your message. And you thank know, you. I believe in you. You are like a father to me and so appreciate your message you. and what you're doing. Thank you. And hopefully we'll have you thank back you. very soon again on Unscripted Faith. And, and Jay, can we have people go to YouTube, Mark Filke YouTube, and watch the entire vision? It will raise the hair on the back of your neck, and it will give you the conviction to vote the Bible and not just your conscience. You got it, sir. You got it. God bless you, man. Love Thank you. you. Thank you. When we come back, you'll hear one woman's story of healing and moving forward after facing immense heartbreak and tragedy. Stay with us. Unscripted Faith returns in just 60 seconds. When you give to Cornerstone Television this month, we'll send you Encouraging Words for a Discouraging World by Dr. Jeremiah. Filled with encouraging and inspiring words, Dr. Jeremiah helps you navigate the difficulties of daily life with faith, courage, and resilience. He shares practical insights and timeless wisdom from the Bible that will help you find hope, comfort, and strength even in the darkest of times. This book includes biblical examples of hope that will inspire you during challenging seasons, inspiring teachings on how to claim victory even in the hardest of times, practical wisdom for holding God's promises in your heart. Whatever hardship you're facing, encouraging words for a discouraging world will help you find perspective, hope, and a renewed sense of purpose. Request your copy today as our thank you gift when you give to CTVN. To give, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. We all face hardships in this world, and our next guest, she had to face the unimaginable, a fa fatal diagnosis for her unborn child. Brooke, in light of our world today, when most would be told what to do about a baby with a birth defect to abort that child, you chose to keep and carry your baby. Please tell us your story, Brooke. Jay and Angela, it's so nice to be with you, and thank you for asking. Um, you know, our story began five years ago. I was a news anchor at the time. Uh, I had been a news anchor at that point for 12 years, and it was what I knew. We had a two-year-old son, and life was shiny and bright. I had an evening uh, anchor position in Indianapolis, and uh, we found out we were pregnant with our second child, and it was right on our timeline. We let the viewers know. We were inundated with well wishes, 
And then I uh, got a bad cold. I got a case of bronchitis. And so I stopped into my OB on my way into work to get a Z pack. And before I left, she said, Hey, do you want to sneak in and see the baby while you're here? And I said, of course. And so I was alone in the ultrasound room uh, when a terrible discovery was made. And that was that our baby uh, was diagnosed with anencephaly, which is a condition where their skull just doesn't totally close at the end of development. And otherwise they're perfectly healthy, but it's a 0% chance of survival. And it was there when I was alone and tears were falling down my face that I heard a word so clearly whispered to my heart. And it was Emmanuel, Emmanuel, mm. Emmanuel. And I'll be honest in that moment of confusion. I could only kind of connect it with Christmas. Um, but it was very soon after that, that we realized God was sending a message through our, our little girl. And we named her Emma Noel after her namesake, Emmanuel. And we began to walk a road we just never saw coming. Wow. wow. Now tell us how, as a mama, you're expecting, how do you navigate that season of hearing, hey, there's no chance for her to live, but yet you're a woman of faith. What did that look like? Well, it looked like, first of all, us coming head to head with a medical um, industry that first and foremost suggested we abort. And this was at a Catholic hospital. And so you can imagine, I was shocked at that suggestion. Wow, yeah. And my husband was the first to uh, say, we are keeping the baby. And I looked at That's him awesome. and I was, what, what is happening here? And I, and I had to piece the, you know, the, the pieces came together. And I realized, oh, oh my goodness, like they're, they're suggesting we abort. And to no surprise, over 85% of anencephaly pregnancies are terminated. Um, in fact, Indiana, where I am from, was the first in the nation to ban abortion, but our situation would have been the exception that would have still been allowed. And I had a chance to testify in front of um, the state house about our, our experience. And so we uh, immediately let the viewers know our situation. We knew we had to be open and transparent and the world, it went around the world, our story, and they really started to lean in closely and watch. And I'll tell you what, it was mostly confusion as to why, why in the world would you choose to carry? And how are you anchoring the news every night? How, where is this hope coming from? Where is this peace coming from? And it was this journey of six months of taking it day by day and, and vowing to be incredibly authentic and transparent as we walked this road. And what we found within ourselves, we thought this message was for the world that God is with us, Emmanuel. And what we realized this message was very much for us. And it was that God is with you. And that means that should change everything. I'll be honest, my husband and I were living really comfortable Christianity at that point up until then. And what this did, this road, our daughter, um, her birth, her death, it unlocked something inside of us, a hunger, a passion for the things of Jesus um, that were just unquenchable. And it, and it ignited something in us that changed us forever. And, and that's our message to anyone walking through hard times is that hard times, suffering is an invitation. And it's up to us whether we say yes or not to Jesus's hand. You know, Brooke, I was thinking about something on my way in today and I was thinking about the difference between, you know, in the abortion industry, you know, you have people that say pro-life, pro-choice, women on both sides. In slavery days, nobody, there were no black people that said, you know, hey, we don't mind being slaves, we don't mind that. But you are a woman that could have, you could easily could have aborted and nobody and that side of pro-choice would have faulted you. When you hear about pro-life and women having a right to choose, and you could have chosen that, what runs through your mind as a mother that chose to carry a child that 0% of children live, what do you feel about that? Or what are your thoughts on that? First of all, I feel overwhelming empathy for the countless parents who have faced the same decision, who were in a facility who said that day, you can go up three flights of stairs and take care of this now. Um, I have heard from so many parents, um, both who, who made similar decisions, different decisions, who are filled with lifelong uh, regret, remorse, yeah. despair. And it's all from this situation, right? And and it's it's professionals guiding parents to this decision. And, and it's heartbreaking. So my first emotion is just heartbreak over all of this. My second emotion 
is just absolute assurance. There is no way you could convince me that this decision was ours to make, whether our daughter lived or died in my so womb. Good. And that's because of one simple scripture that is profound. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And I just don't think that there is any way you can argue with God's word that he knows these babies. And Amen. Emma's life, it was 21 minutes we had with her after she was born on March 15th. There I am with her. And it was crushing. It was heartbreaking. It was beautiful. It was sacred. And God used her life to change not only my husband and I's life, but to, to exalt this message across the globe that he is with us. And because he is with us, we are more than conquerors. And life suffering does not have to bury us. We don't have to be victims. We don't even have to be survivors. We are more than conquerors. Come and on. that truth just rang so clear wow. to us in the aftermath of her death. I mean, this is so powerful. And in those pictures, we see you have an older son. How, what kind of impact do you think this made on his life? You know, he was two at the time. And so I, I think his memories of the exact day are pretty blurry. But I'll tell you what, we celebrate Emma's birthday every March 15th now with Max and Marlo, um, our daughter who came after. And we tell the story. And that's what we are to do as Christians. We are to proclaim God's goodness in the valleys. And what it's doing, I hope, and it is my prayer, is that it is solidifying our children's faith by understanding, hey, mom and dad made a really tough decision. And we don't try and be happy. We don't try and cover up our emotions. Um, we, we let them come, we grieve, we celebrate, and we let them know that through it all, God is good and God can be trusted even in the fires of life. And I think that that is a testimony that they're going to hold close uh, to their hearts all throughout their own lives. You know, I think it's such an outstanding story. We've got a couple of minutes left. And one of the things I would love to hear is you said God is good even in the valley. You had 21 minutes with your daughter and that was it. What is the consolation that God gave you during that time that gave you? Because I believe God speaks to us in those moments and every person is different and God knows exactly what we need to hear. What did he share with you to bring you through that time? It was actually three days after her death. She was in the hospital room with us thanks to a device called a cuddle cot. And really the day I had dreaded the most was the day of discharge because I did not understand physically, how a mother could walk out of a hospital and leave her baby behind. I didn't know how that was possible. And I woke up that morning with tears already streaming down my face. And I cried out to God in that hospital room. And I said, I can't do this. I cannot do this. And in that moment, immediately, Jay, I felt the power of heaven descend upon me, literally wow. a weight of peace that just blanketed all mm. of my fears. And we ended up rocking Emma and handing her to a nurse and walking out. And we got in the car and we looked at each other and we smiled, my husband and I. And it wasn't that, that the grief was gone. It was that we just realized we walked through the unimaginable and we were not burned. We didn't even wow. smell like smoke. And we realized okay. everything we said we believed our whole lives is true. And that's that death couldn't defeat Jesus and it cannot oh, defeat bro. us. We are bigger we are stronger because of Jesus' sacrifice. And that's what he unleashed in us was the reality of the truth. And sometimes it takes suffering to unleash that inside of us. And I'm so thankful he did it. Wow, wow. I mean, wow. that, I love that you are willing to say yes to the hard thing and you didn't short circuit your suffering, but rather invited it and it transformed everything for you forever. Brooke, your story is so powerful. We are so thankful for you. We're thankful that you took, had the vulnerability to walk through it on a national scale, you know, yeah. for people to walk with you. Thank you for your bravery and your honesty. Thank you, Jay and Angela. It's an honor to be with you today. Amen. You know, when you hear stories like that, you think the suffering that people go through, we're always looking to escape it, but it truly has proven for Brooke and her family to be the source of knowing who God truly is. 
Yeah, you know, in the middle of everything, I mean, knowing that they could have aborted, I think that's yes. what's really outstanding. They could have easily have said, it's over, it's done, you know, and just thrown in the towel on that. And they yes. chose to say yes in spite of it. I mean, because that's why I wanted to ask her that question. I was yes. thinking, how in the world, I mean, because, you know, like the whole thing with slavery, you know, yes. there's no black yes. people that said, hey, I'm, oh, I'm pro slavery. Yes. Absolutely. You know, but women, I'm because we say, oh, woman's right to choose. But there's a lot of women that say, no, yes. that's not your body. That's not your choice. Yes. She made that decision with her husband. Yes. And to carry that baby all the way, knowing there's a 0% chance and still say yes to God is completely outstanding. It is. And you think about how she could have easily said no. Like you said, you know, that would have been accepted. It would have been um, politically correct for her to say, no, I'm not going to continue with this. But in fact, her saying yes brought greater life. Like her carrying that death within her really is what it was ultimately gave her an ultimate life that she wouldn't have had otherwise. Without you know, Jay, do you feel that suffering is good? Without a doubt. Matter of fact, I think suffering is what makes you great. Um, Jesus even said, if you suffer with me, you'll be able to reign with me. Yes. And I think a lot of time when we come to the Christian faith, we think, well, you know what, uh, uh, now that I've come to Jesus, all my problems go away. I mean, I'm okay. sure you've heard it as a pastor. We've yes. heard it in our church yes. that people will say all the time they got saved. Man, once I got saved, all these problems hit. Well, welcome to the party, pal. Yeah, that's you know right. what I mean? That's, it's kind of like that whole thing on Die Hard. Remember that? Yes. <laughs> do the body out there. He's like, welcome to the party, pal. People just whistling around like it's yes. just going to be a regular old day. You signed up for a battle and for a war. That's you know, one of the things I think is so important too to mention, you know, when Bishop Filkey was on there, I love the fact that, you know, he's talking about how we need to vote our biblical values yeah. and how important that is. But then she comes on, a woman that could have, yes. that in the natural mind, yes. in the natural mind could have said, I'm going to de destroy this child yes. and kill it. But she trusted God with it. How important is it for you yeah. to consider biblical values? Oh, I voting? mean, it's critical. You know, I think that with everything in our life, it declares Jesus or it doesn't, right. you know, and so we have to choose life over and over again, even in the midst of death. And that's why I like what Brooke said. Yeah. The word that the Lord gave her was Emmanuel. And in that moment, she couldn't really conceptualize. What do you mean? Yeah. But like it went from being this national idea, which in this political era, like Emmanuel, God is with us on a national scale. But he is also Emmanuel in the midst of our very independent, individualistic suffering. That's right. And I That's think right. that like, especially in this season and what's to come, we know that things don't get better as time goes on, mm -hmm. right? We, we understand that, that he is Emmanuel, God with us, and he will guide us through no matter what comes. And even though we need to vote our biblical values, uh, regardless of who gets in office, he's still Emmanuel. Always. He's still God with us. He's going to carry us through no matter what we're walking through. And God is good. Even as she mentioned, God is good yes. all the time. And I love what she said about how you have to sing God's praises from the valley. A lot of times we don't do a good job with that. No, we we love it on the mountaintop. But can you praise God in the valley? Because I believe if you can praise God in the valley like yeah. Joseph did in the prison, Come on. it qualifies you and validates you that you're ready for the promise of the palace. Come on, Come go on, ahead somebody. and preach. Come on, really, Come we on, need that truth. Emmanuel, God is with us. He is with you on the mountaintop. He is with you in the valley. So no matter where you are, find yourself in the one who carries you and loves you. Emmanuel with you. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.